Defence have tried solar before, but it's always there's always a problem with it. Things like weight, things like how fragile it is, is the number one thing that's held back solar adoption. We protect the solar cells by fully embedding them entirely within composite materials. So for something like a Bushmaster or a Hawkeye vehicle, we make a super tough but super lightweight structure. I really love the non-slip version of, of this that we've achieved this time round. Broadly speaking, uh, one metre square of direct sunlight produces one kilowatt of power. Being able to capture that energy and convert it is where the challenge is. Uh, the solar panels that we saw today are at the upper thresholds of what uh, the current capability is. Even in less than optimal conditions, you still can get some quite good power. You can um, harvest energy when it's raining. You can harvest energy through, um, through cloud cover. The proudest moment of this project is the realisation that a solar panel could save a life. Being an air defence unit, um, we're a highly targetable asset on the battlefield, so remaining uh, below the detection threshold is essential for our survivability. We use the solar bonnet in a command variant uh, PMV where we operate uh, radios. Uh, using the solar panel, we're able to conduct the command functions for an extended period of time without having to uh, turn on the vehicle and essentially give away our position. The Army needs to work with industry because industry needs that direction, it needs that feedback of what are Army's problems. The feedback we receive from our soldiers uh, in conjunction with uh, emerging and new concepts from industry partners is what creates new opportunities for us to explore. It makes sense from a strategic point of view to harvest energy from your environment. There's a lot of power falling on the earth and defence might as well use it.